Hi. Hello everybody and welcome to another Movie Hooker YouTube video. Um, this one I just want to have a little bit of a rant. Well, not a rant, but I just want to explain the works and why there's so much more to South Korean writer-director Yong Sang-ho than just Train to Busan. Um, okay, let me see. Let's get on. Let's get stuck in. Right, for, you, for those of you who do not know, um, Young Sang Ho started off his, um, his, his career in animated films. His first movie was called The Fake. His second movie was called The King of Pigs. And then he was commissioned to do two animated zombie movies. One was called Soul Station, and the other one was called Busan Bound. Not Train to Busan yet, Busan Bound. So when Soul Station was made, they had the viewing, and all the executives thought wow this the, the live action feel to this is just outstanding so uh, your next movie is no longer called busan bound it's called train to busan and it's going to be your first ever live action <coughs> movie <coughs> excuse me and yeah so the rest is history i guess there you know um train to busan was just an emotional beautiful human story um with zombies in the background Pretty much, um, Soul Station, the animated feature, um, is also um, connected to Train to Busan. Um, I think it's its predecessor, not its prequel, but I think it takes um, takes place a couple of days before the events of Train to Busan. You know, listen, I don't know if you can hear my ducks outside; they're just driving me mad. But I've got a microphone on, and it should be okay. You mightn't pick them up, but they're being assholes. Um, I have a lot of ducks and chickens and turkeys and they just they just stand at my door and quack at me all day for me to give them food <clears throat> until I break and give them more food than they should. Anyway, so yeah, Soul Station is a prequel to or a predecessor to Train to Busan. Now let's go back to uh let's see, the King of Pigs, which I think was his second one, and that was in 2011. And that is an animated feature as well. Now, 2022, just recently, last year, there was a live action adaptation of King of Pigs. And I haven't checked it out yet, but I, I, I really can't wait to check it out. Um, King of Pigs. So I'll just say, tell you a little bit about it. It just says, Jong, Jong Suk and Kyung Ming meet up to talk about their high school past. It's been 15 years since they last talked. And it brings up all kinds of memories. That's not really giving me a lot of way. So basically, it's about um, a load of people getting bullied in school. And I think they're known as the pigs, the people who are getting bullied. And then this new guy comes on the scene and he is the king of pigs. And they get revenge, pretty much. It's a dark serial killer drama. And uh, it's it's phenomenal. So I'm re I haven't seen the, the animated one in so long. And... Uh, but the let me see if I can find the TV show here, um, because it was just recently released. Shut up, ducks! Yeah, so King of Pigs twenty twenty two. I was right. Um, Seven point nine on IMDb. A brilliant, awesome looking poster. Two friends meet up for a recall of their experiences as victims of high school bullying when they receive a message from their friend 20 years ago and mysterious serial killings begin to occur. So, yeah, I'm going to just say again, um, go check out his previous work, his first movie, The Thick, and then The King of Pigs. And then after you check out the animated King of Pigs, move on then to the live action K-drama. Now, who directed this that's what i want to know um let me see um <coughs> series directed by deji kim okay and he is yeah nothing really there that i know of in a way but yeah he is the director of king of pigs it just says unknown episodes so i'm not sure um, how many episodes he is directing. Now, the screenwriter, it, it's a bit weird now because it's not Young Sang Ho adapting his own work, but I bet my money or whatever, um, not money, but I bet uh, anything that he approves of this writer. So basically, the, the, the screenwriter for the, the live action 
uh, King of Pigs is by Tak J. Young. And that's all. This is the first writing credits that he has. This is the only thing that he's listed for. So really looking forward to checking out the live action King of Pigs. Now, after Train to Busan became, I think Train to Busan grossed worldwide um, $292 million or something. It became South Korea's highest grossing movie. I'm not sure if it still is, but it just, it was a worldwide phenomenon. And uh, then we got uh, Peninsula. Okay, now let me talk a little bit about Peninsula. Now, when I say like I was waiting like a crackhead for the, the sequel to Train to Busan, that would be an understatement. I, I was just, oh, every single day I was searching for updates, anything. Then things started getting a little bit worrying, right? Once you, once you have something that is such a financial success, then it's inevitable that you're going to get a sequel. Um, and I thought because of all the years that were in between Train de Busan and then Peninsula, that was more than enough time for Yun Sang Ho to come up with an epic continuation of her, an already beautiful human story, you know. But it didn't quite fucking work out like that, did it? Because obviously, for being such a big financial success, um, ducks are driving me mad. Um, obviously, for being such a huge, excuse me, financial success. People wanted a bit of that zombie pie, you know, people wanted to put their fingers in that zombie pie. So therefore, we get introduced to a lot of American characters. We get introduced with American characters because people just can't be asked to read subtitles. Oh, if I wanted to read a book, I'd just read a book. No, it's not like that. So basically, all those people are to blame who do not like subtitles. And they thought that the introduction of American characters and fast CGI car chases is what people wanted, when in fact, all we wanted was a second train to Busan. The first worrying thing about Peninsula was the poster. Train to Busan presents. I was like, what? Who presents? A train presents? Not even Young Sang Ho presents or, you know, Mag Duck. Like Don Lee, I'll just say, I don't suck. <laughs> um, but yeah, a train to Busan presents, so like a zombie infested train pres presents your next movie. Anyway, such a shame that, it, that they had so long to come up with a great story. And this is the, that is the road that they traveled down, introducing American characters and CGI car chases like the Fast and the Furious and all that other books like you know so i was very annoyed so after peninsula i was ready to put the whole idea of like getting another train to basan to bed and say right okay that's it that's it screwed so he went on then i think his next movie would have been psychokinesis which is a netflix movie it's available worldwide on netflix and it is a superhero movie about a father who's estranged from his daughter and he drinks some water from a fountain and gains special powers. Psychokinesis was a lot of fun. Definitely, uh, it was a lot of fun. But it was just a little bit lighthearted for me. It was more of a, like a family superhero movie, like all superhero movies. So I can't blame the guy. I was going in just wanting, like, you know, the darkness and brutality that we are used to with South Korean cinema. And we didn't get it. But I still enjoyed Psychokinesis. Um, just not to the extent I wish I did. Um, yeah, so that was Psychokinesis. What else? There's another TV series, and he's got, he's, a, he's got the writing credits in it, and I can't find it. It's not listed on IMDb, but I found out about it. I thought it was a, a, a K-drama called um, The Guest, and that's about three like sort of people, a priest and two other people who solve crimes of a supernatural nature in South Korea. It's very, very good. But I was wrong. It's not Song Kang-ho. So, yeah, okay, well, let's go on to, I'm just, this is all coming off the top of my head here. I think Hellbound might have been his next one. And Hellbound was so good. Uh, it's based on a webtoon that Yon Sang-ho wrote and illustrated himself. So Netflix gave him a ton of cash and says, you go make the series that you want, um, total creative control and all that. Hellbound was great. A lot of people were questioning the CGA in it. And 
for a while I also did, I guess, as well. But if you look at Young Sang Ho's webtoon that it's based on, then these big creatures are pretty identical to what is in the story. So um, any sort of questionable CGI that I thought was completely easily forgiven once like you've seen the, the sheer barbarity of the killings in this, you know, Basically, if you haven't seen Hellbound, it is basically about uh, like an angel of death who will appear in front of you and say, you're going to die on the 11th of January, 2023. Um, I can't remember what you call them. They're like the crusaders of hell or something like that. When your time, when your time is up, you hear like sort of Jurassic Park rumblings, like something, <clears throat> something large and something running towards you. And then you are taken, you are lifted up in the air, thrown against cars, thrown through glass, dragged along the road, ripped apart, and then you're dragged to hell for your suffering to begin. <laughs> so I always thought that was these people that are dying in this series is uh, going to experience the most horrific pain known to man. And then after that, you're, that's when the real suffering is going to begin. So it's when you think about that, that is a pretty bleak, you know. So yeah, Hellbound became one of the biggest um, streaming uh, series on Netflix. I'm not even sure. I think it might have even beat Squid Game. So that'll tell you how big Hellbound is, and it has been confirmed that Hellbound will be getting a season two. I just haven't heard anything really so let's move on now boom from hellbound and uh, we are going to go to monstrous monstrous is another k drama uh, here's the thing about k dramas uh, they're, they're such quality content most of the time that you don't want to move off your chair <laughs> until the series is done but a south korean series most of them have 16 one hour episodes in one season by the time the series is finished, you've got bed sores because you just don't want to get up. It's far too much viewing, but it's quality viewing. So you're just going to be stuck there until the series is done. So Monstrous does not follow that same path. It follows, um, it's six episodes and each episode is just under 40 minutes. And now I'm like, oh, I wish they were like an hour long or I wish it had more episodes. So you can't win really, you know. So Monstrous is set in a small rural countryside. And a Buddha statue is disturbed and the head of it is removed and taken to some museum or something for to attract um, tourists. Um, but once the statue is disturbed, um, an ancient evil is released into the town. Um, black rain starts falling from the sky, destroying everything that it touches, crops. And then the residents of the small town start turning into homicidal maniacs. Their eyes go completely white demonic white and they grab whatever weapon is closest to them and they kill they go on a frenzy a killing frenzy killing anyone or anything that comes in contact with them now you can sort of class this as partially a zombie thing but if you take it like george a romero's the crazies or rob jabba's the sadness from taiwan then that's the sort of approach here um, you've still got infected residents or I think maybe possessed might be the better way. To... And then basically it's up to a cop and a shaman uh, who comes in to stop this ancient evil curse. Uh, it's very, very good. As I said, very, very short lived. Um, only six episodes and I want more. It was epic. So you could check that out. That's monstrous. Um, it's from Studio Dragon and a lot of their stuff is on Netflix now. But usually what happens with K-dramas, it airs in Korea. And then we will get it on Netflix usually. So, uh, yeah, it hasn't arrived on Netflix. I watched it on Now TV, and I wouldn't recommend um, subscribing to Now TV because it's uh, a ripoff. So I, I'd only get it if I get a deal like two ninety nine a month or something. And now my subscription is running out the day before The Last of Us is released. So as you can imagine, I might have to just renew my subscription for one month. Oh. But yeah, don't go near Now TV. But if you do have it, then you can watch Monstrous on Now TV. I'm not even sure if that is in America. I think it's just probably Ireland and England, UK. Um, so yeah, that's Monstrous. What up now? Let me see. Um, Jung E. Oh, okay. Jung E. Let me see. Is 
uh, not Jog, John E. is a new sci-fi action movie written and directed by Young Sang Ho again. And this is coming out on the 20th of January. So just in a little over a week, we're going to be able to watch this on Netflix. It'll be released worldwide. Now, it's set in 2194, the 22nd century. The outcome of a civil war hinges on cloning the brain of an elite soldier to create a robot mercenary. So if you look at the trailer, it looks like this brain cloning experiment did not go according to plan in this combat AI ultimate elite weapon soldier is, you know, rogue, I guess, and starts killing people. I'm not too sure if that's exactly how it'll play out, but that's what I want. That's what I want. So that is John E, and John E is going to be released on Netflix on the 20th of January. Uh, okay, another one. This is very, very exciting. Very exciting. Uh, I'm not sure if he's up to date with your manga, um, but we have... A new TV show coming out based on a very, very popular manga. One of my favouritest, favouritest mangas in the whole entire world. And that is Parasite. And if you don't know what Parasite is about, let me tell you. I'll tell you what it's about. It's about this. It's about these aliens, like worm aliens, wormies. And they fall from the sky. And they go inside their host when the host is sleeping. And then once they have control of the brain, uh, oh man, they can like they morph into these huge, uh, I don't know, killing machines and not killing machines, just monsters, I guess, but giant monsters. And they can have blades coming, your skin will turn into a blade. But anyway, the main protagonist in Parasite, I can't remember his name, but he's just like a normal teenager and he's listening to music. And the worm's trying to get inside him, but he's got headphones on and he's got something over his nose. And the, the alien can't get in through the holes here. And so basically the alien burrows its way into his hand. And yeah, what's the hand called? Itchy? Hold on one wee second here. Um, parasite. Yeah, so like, like your man wakes, the, the kid wakes up the next morning and like he's talking to his hand. His ha it's so cute. The hand turns into this little, oh, like this little gorgeous little alien that you can't help but fall in love with. And it's about, <laughs> it's about the relationship between this guy and this alien that is inside his hand. But the alien is sort of good. Uh, while all the other aliens and their human hosts are trying to harvest the human civilization, um, it's up to it's up to our hero. I, I just can't remember the names here. I'll just have to check. Okay. Mm. Okay, I think the hand, his little hand is called Miki. And I think that is Japanese for right. I'm not even sure. Something like that. Uh, I can't even remember. Shin, I think the lead character is called, maybe. I'm not too sure. But it's a phenomenal anime. Brilliant anime. And I highly, highly recommend it. Now, there has been two live action movies also of Parasite, uh, which are really good. They've got the CGI really, really good. So, so far, oh, there was a TV series, I think here so what we have is parasite part one parasite part two and that was parasite part one was 2014 parasite part two 2015 they were both made together and there was a small tv series apparently as well that is the anime of the tv series oh yes i have seen that and that was 2014 to 2015 as well so here it is this content is already brilliant. So now, Young Sang Ho, like this has been happening now, you know, you've got Takeshi Miyake going to South Korea and making a K-drama, and now you've got Young Sang Ho uh, making a K-drama out of Japanese content, you know, so it's great that they're uh, collaborating because there's just so much greatness between Japan and South Korea. Uh, it's amazing. So yeah, the, the new one is going to be called um, Parasite, the gray 
Okay. So, and it's also, man, man, man. I'm just going to confirm this now, but yeah. So, Ku Kuo Yan, my God, I'm butchering the language and I'm, I apologize, is the lead dude from the phenomenal K drama, which is also on Netflix, and that is called DP. DP is, ah, oh, it's brilliant and i've never I, like I, I was actually talking about it recently in how i've never really been affected by a tv show as much as dp did the acting is off the charts there's like the final scene in that it was you know i can't tell you what happened but i had my hand over my mouth going oh my fucking god Tears were rolling down my eyes. Not even joking. Not afraid to admit it. It was just the most heartbreaking thing I've ever seen. It was so human. And oh, it was just, you know, at the end of that scene, when they say cut, I'm pretty certain that, you know, that guy couldn't just go, ah, that's it. That's a wrap. That guy was in an awful way after doing that scene. And I would also bet anything I have. I don't have money, so I'll bet you a little Cthulhu. There you go. Uh, yeah, so that is, he is going to be starring in Young Sang Ho's Parasite TV show, which is titled Parasite the Grey. So that is great news. So everybody, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this director and, you know, hopefully, you know, that you'll now want to go and check out some of his earlier work, you know, I'll tell you about the fake as well. Sorry. And that was in 2013. The fake is another animated movie. Okay. So that's what I was saying. We had the fake King of Pigs, Soul Station, Busan Bound, but then Busan Bound turned on the train to Busan and was his first ever live action. So this is his directorial debut as far as I know. Uh, the fake, it is an hour and 41 minutes, and the, the plot reads, a convict returns to his hometown to begin, a, a convict returns to his hometown to again torture his family, face his neighbours, and try and destroy the local religious fanatics and their plans to keep money from the village people. So yeah, I don't even know if we have, we need a live action of this as well, but just because this is animated, please do not let it put you off. It is just as cinematic as any live action feature and you know i guarantee that so we have the fake the king of pigs and the king of pigs then has been adapted into a tv show from 2022 then you have soul station train to basan peninsula pants peninsula and you have psychokinesis uh monstrous the tv show and Jung E, the upcoming um, sci-fi action movie that's going to be releasing on the 20th of January on Netflix. And also now he is going to be making a Parasite TV show. Now, I only found out about that Parasite TV show and I couldn't even make a video yet. I was that excited about it. I was like, oh my God, you know, how did I not know about this? And sometimes they just get past me, you know, but I, I always get them and they end up um, so everybody, thank you very much again for listening. And again, I hope uh, you shall go and check out some of Young Sang's. Can you hear my dogs? So, yeah, please go check out Young Sang Ho's other work, including these animated features. And I guess that's it for this video, guys. Um, I hope I've hooked you up with some gems. And let me tell you now, they are gems. So, guys, thanks again. Bye. Take it easy.